Hi everyone, I'm Miss Laura and um, I want to show you how to do a fun and uh, fairly simple art project. This is the first time I've made a video of myself doing an art project, so uh, I am not an expert. I'm trying something new. It's gonna be an adventure for me. And I hope you'll try something new. I hope you'll join in and do this project with me. First of all, I'm gonna let you know what you need. Um, there aren't a lot of supplies that you need. You're gonna need some, uh, some paper. I have thin copy paper. I think that's gonna work the best for what we're trying to do. And I just went and got three sheets so I could try this activity a couple of times, a few different times. And then you're going to need some glue. Um, it can be a liquid glue or it can be a glue stick of some kind. You're going to need some crayons. They don't have, you don't have to have a lot of different colors. A few colors is fine. I have some metallic ones here that I've used before, um, and I have a box of other crayons, so any kind of crayons will work. And then you're going to need some scissors, and you're going to need some cardboard. Now, I'm not talking about cardboard like packing boxes. I'm talking about the kind of cardboard you have in your pantry if you have cereal boxes or um, cracker boxes. Um, I have a rice box here that I've already started cutting up for this project. So what you're going to need is one piece of cardboard that's about the same size as your paper. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I cut it to be about the same size. Okay, that's the first cardboard that you need. And then you just need, you don't need all these boxes worth. I was just showing you a few different ideas of boxes, but you need um, one small to medium box, probably medium sized box that you can start taking apart and cutting up. Um, and we're going to be making a robot. So I'm starting to cut some squares, some triangles, some different sizes. I've got some skinny, long little pieces like this. So if you want to, <clears throat> excuse me, get a piece of cardboard the size of your paper and then open up another cardboard box and start cutting the pieces apart. You can cut circles, you can cut rectangles, triangles, whatever you choose, um, but make them different sizes. Uh, when you're prepared, when you're ready, when you have that done and you're ready to get started on our art project, um, just unpause the video and we will keep going from there. Okay, <clears throat> I've cut some pieces here and I'm going to start gluing. I have no idea what my robot is going to look like. I haven't planned this out ahead of time. Now you can do that. You can plan it out and lay out all the pieces you want before you start gluing them. But since you're gonna be watching me, I thought I should just better, it would be better if I just got started gluing them on. <clears throat> I'm gonna use the cardboard side so that uh, the, the print won't be distracting. It doesn't really matter. You can choose to use either side but I'm going to take this, I have this kind of big rectangle here and I can decide if I want it to be this way or this way. I think I'm gonna make it, mine go sideways so I can, um, kind of at an angle, so I can make it have longer arms and legs on the, my robot can have longer arms and legs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just glue that down on my paper. I need more than a dot of glue, but I don't have to have a whole lot. I don't want it to seep out around the edges. If it does, it's no big deal though. Okay, so I've attached that piece in the middle, and then I'm gonna try to start thinking about what I want to do for the head. This was one of the shapes on the top of the box when I started cutting it apart. See, here's the other part right here for the tabs. And I kind of liked this little bump here, so I'm gonna make that part of my head on my robot, but I need something else to go underneath it, and I'm just trying to decide. I think I'm going to cut maybe kind of a, 
a semicircle or an egg shape with the top cut off. Yours can be whatever you choose. It does not need to look like mine. That's what makes it a fun adventure. So I think the top of my robot it's gonna start off looking like that. I have no idea if it's gonna really look like a robot. It might end up looking like a pirate. I'm not sure, but maybe it'll be a pirate robot. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue those pieces down. And when I set them down here on my robot, on my big paper, I realized that it's not really small enough. I need to make this, these pieces a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna cut it down and play around with it. The nice thing about art is your art doesn't have to look like anybody else's. My art won't, and um, that's all right. We're different people, and it's okay for the things that we create to look different too, just like God made each one of us different. Even if you have a twin or a brother or sister that looks a whole lot like you, you are still two different people, and God made both of you. Okay, so... I've got this a little bit smaller and I'm going to glue those pieces down to my paper to try to, uh, to make the head of my robot. Now, I think I want to put a lot of rectangles on here because I think that will make it look more robot-like. But you may decide you want a robot that is full of circles or um, lots of... Uh, Maybe you want triangle legs. I have no idea how your robot is going to move, but I'm going to make my robot, um, I'm gonna give him some long arms and legs. They won't be able to be that long because they'll go off my paper. I wanna to try to keep them on my cardboard. But I'm gonna cut this one in half right here and give my robot some legs. I wonder what you're doing with yours. I'm curious to know if your robot is going to have legs or wheels. Um, maybe your robot is going to have wings. Maybe your robot is going to have legs, but it's not going to just have two legs. Maybe it's going to have one. Maybe it's going to have four or five. I have no idea. So far, I just have my two little robot legs right here. I'm gonna give him some feet that are kind of shaped like his head. I'm gonna kind of make him some, some half circle shaped feet that I'm gonna glue on the ends of his legs. It's okay if they're not the same size. You can start, as you do this, you can start making up a story about your robot. You can think about why your robot looks the way he does or maybe what kind of work he does. You know, robots, do a lot of work. I have one foot that's a little bit bigger than my, than the other one, but I kind of like it that way, so it doesn't look too perfect. And I'm gonna glue both my feet down and then I'll pick it up and show you. Okay. Robots do all kinds of work. There are robots that help build cars. There are robots that help build um, big heavy machinery. There's also robots that help build computers and things that aren't big, things that are small. Now, I want, I think I'm gonna have my robot's arms in some different little pieces so that I can move them around. I made the body nice and big. You can make the body whatever size you choose. But since I have a big robot body, I have to make some of the other pieces a little smaller so they'll fit on my paper. Now, I'm gonna have one arm go up in the air, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna have the other arm do yet. I might make it go up to, let's see. Okay. <laughs> I told you I was gonna try to not get too much glue, but I have, I've gotten a little more glue. And you know the trick about getting rid of a little extra glue on your hands? You just rub it, rub it, rub it in your hands and it kind of balls up in little, little gray pieces and rubs off, falls off, and it's not sticky anymore. Okay, I've got one robot arm here and I'm gonna move it a little bit closer, maybe even 
maybe even while this is all still wet, I'm gonna move it up a little bit so it'll be closer to the shoulder like that. Okay, then for my other robot arm, hmm, I think I'm gonna make this one down. Maybe I have a dancing robot. Okay, I want the shoulder See, this robot shoulder's about here, so I'm gonna make this robot shoulder about the same place. And his arm is gonna start, this arm's gonna start going down. Your robot could have rectangular arms, it could have oval arms, your arms could look like big long tubes. Whatever you choose. Okay, I've got one more piece on the arm, and then I'm trying to decide, I think I might add some hands. I'm gonna cut kind of an oval piece right here. Okay, I have an oval, and I'm going to cut that into two pieces, and that will be my hands. Do you ever start to make a piece of art and then get kind of worried because it's not going exactly the way you thought it was, thought it would? You know, that's okay, that happens to me sometimes too, but I try to remember that part of the art process is the adventure of creating something that, something new, something I may not know at all what it's gonna turn out like. I hadn't thought about making these little kind of hands, but that's what I did. Now, I still gotta, I wanna think about his face and I wanna think about his body. Hmm. I'm gonna take some of these little pieces here that I already have, I've just made some little rectangles as I was cutting other things apart. And I'm going to add a few pieces of this to his, to his body. You know, robots have um, I, when I think about robots, at least, I think about lots of little buttons and panels and um, <clears throat> maybe some, um, some wires or loops. And you can make your symmetrical, where the things on one side of his body look just like the other side. Like, I could put... I don't know that you're gonna be able to see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna start turning these next pieces over onto the colored side so you can see it a little better. I've got a rectangle here in the middle and I've got a long piece here. I could make it symmetrical, but I don't really think I want to. I think it'll be more fun if I just make the pieces look like however I want them to. Rubbing off a little more of that glue. Okay, so I'm gonna show you with the other side and I'm gonna put some more buttons. Maybe there are some buttons or some pieces of cardboard on this panel here in the middle. I think I might make a, ooh, I think I know what I'll do. I think I'll make a wavy piece like this. And then I can glue these two pieces side by side, but with some space in between. That might look like a tube, the negative space there. Okay, and then I think my robot needs some buttons. So some buttons I can push, maybe a button to say stop or a button to say go, or maybe a button to say it's time to dance. <laughs> so, cause that's what I think I have here. So I think I'm making a dancing robot. So I cut a circle. The buttons don't have to be circular. You can make them however you choose, but I just decided I wanted a different shape. Circles are kind of hard to cut. But the only suggestion I have is just to practice. Do you see how I'm not turning my scissors? I'm just turning the paper. And then I just keep cutting with my scissors. Sometimes if you turn your arm, you can get your arm all twisted around. Okay. Let's see, I've got two buttons here. I've got this zigzaggedy piece and a square. I've got a rectangle, two long pieces trying to think about what I want to put down here. I think I'm going to 
make something maybe a little zigzagged. I think I'm gonna make some ups and downs. Might look like some mountains. Or some teeth. Maybe you have a ferocious robot that's, maybe it's a guard robot to guard your um, treehouse. Or maybe it's a robot that is going to, ooh, I've got a good idea. Maybe a robot that's going to do your chores for you. A robot that can clean your house. I'd like a robot that would, um, would clean my house. That sounds like a pretty nice thing. I have a piece here, it's a little too long. Just gonna trim it a little bit. And when I say too long, I just mean I'd like it a little bit shorter, that's all. Okay, so here is my robot body. Now I'm gonna try to think about what I'm gonna do up here on the head. I could do two eyes, but that seems kind of silly to just make it just look like a person. So I am going to make my robot have one eye. It's gonna go right here in the middle. But because, you know, he's a dance robot, I'm gonna give him some ears too because he might need those ears to um, be able to hear the beat of the music. He won't necessarily use his ears like you and I use our ears to hear. But maybe that will make him look more like a musical robot. Okay, one ear. Oh, I like the ears, that adds a lot. I was kind of thinking my robot looked too pirate-ish for what I was really trying to do, but the ears are really gonna help. See? Maybe you want to have bolts, um, like um, bolts on the side of his body or on his arms or on his neck. Maybe you want to have long, um, strings of hair cut from thin pieces of cardboard. I'm going to give mine a big smile because he loves to dance. <laughs> okay, that's pretty silly. I like my big smile. If you're struggling to cut things out of the cardboard and you can't make them look like what you want them to look like, don't give up. It's okay, first of all, to ask for help. If you need an older um, person to help you, a brother or sister or a parent or a grandparent, whoever's there with you, if you need to ask them for help, that's okay. Um, and, uh, hmm, I'm looking here. I don't think this looks like an eye, does it? It looks like a nose. <laughs> Maybe I'll let it be the nose, and maybe I'll go ahead and give him two eyes up here on this top part of his head. Then I think I'll be done. Um, when I'm done at home, the next thing for you to do when you finish your robot is gonna be to let him dry. The next part of what we're going to do will be a lot more, um, probably be a lot more fun if you uh, let it dry first. But since I am making this video and I don't really know how to edit out part in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and do the next step, even if something moves around and messes up a little bit on my robot. Okay, last thing I'm gluing down is one eye. Now, I didn't add a lot of detail. I could have added a lot more, but I just figured it maybe wouldn't be too much fun to sit and watch me add details to my robot. I could have made more cardboard pieces on the legs or the feet. I could have given him another leg. I could have put more pieces here on the arm. Take the time you want to, but I encourage you to at least cover this middle part with extra pieces of cardboard and to give your robot some kind of face. Maybe you have a two-headed robot, so you need two faces. Maybe you have um, a robot with a round body, so you want to make all the pieces in the middle shaped differently than what I have. That's great, feel free to use your imagination. Okay, now like I said, you're going to let yours dry. 
but for this video, I'm not going to take the time to dry mine. What I am going to do is I'm going to use part of this cardboard that's from a box that I um, had cut up, and I'm gonna set it on the table underneath my robot so I don't get anything on my table. And then I'm going to take a piece of this white paper, like I said, let yours dry, but I'm gonna take a piece of this white paper and I'm gonna take a crayon and I am going to um, do a crayon rubbing. So the first thing you'll need to do if your crayon has paper on it is to tear off the paper. Now, for some people, it's really stressful to think about tearing the paper off a crayon, but it's okay, the crayon doesn't mind. For parents, it's great to let your kids tear the paper off um, themselves if they can. Of course, if it's too frustrating, that's all, you know, you don't need to do it, but um, you don't need to, to um, ask them to do it. But kids, I encourage you to tear the paper off your crayon yourself. It is, um, it's good for your fingers. It's good for strengthening your fingers. Just like lifting weights makes people's arms and legs stronger, doing things like tearing the paper off a crayon makes your fingers stronger. Okay, sometimes I can get a nice little piece there going a long way, and that makes it a little easier. Okay, now I have my crayon. I'm going to lay this paper on top of my cardboard. I'm gonna see if I can do this holding it up so that you can see what happens. I'm gonna hold onto the crayon. I'm not gonna just like roll it along on the paper. I'm gonna hold onto it and move it on the paper, pressing it down. Can you see the outline that's starting to create? Okay, I'm not very good at doing that, holding it up in the air like this. So I'm gonna lay it down and finish rubbing rubbing it. Oh, I love seeing its face. There's just something about seeing a, um, a robot's face that makes it seem more, uh, more human or more real. Okay. Now, one trick is to hold the paper still. Mine didn't get held completely still, but that's okay. It got held pretty still. But look what I have here. I have a rubbing that I created by laying this on top of here and pressing down. Now, I can make as many of these as I want off of this one, this one cardboard robot. I have some metallic crayons here. I'm gonna take a little piece of a copper crayon and do another one. And it just, let's see, let's count. Let's see how quickly I can do it. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, I like this with the metallic. Six, seven, Eight, uh, nine, <laughs> 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. Look at that. It looks like so much fun. Now, I have two pieces of art I've created for my one piece of art here. Okay, feel free to do this as many times as you want. Maybe you do this and then you think, hmm, well, I like the way he looks, but I'm gonna add a few more lines on here, or I'm gonna add some hearts on the background or some stars. Stars are kind of hard to cut, but you could do it. Or I'm going to add another leg now and make him look a little bit different. Whatever you do to personalize your robot, when you're finished and you've let it dry and you've made these rubbings, then um, save him, and I'll show you later